Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about some simple properties of expectation and variance of a random variable. Let us assume that you have some random variable x and you have a linear function or transformation of this random variable x. Now this linear transformation of x gives us a new random variable, say y. So y can be represented in this case as ax plus b because it's a linear transformation of x. Now, similar examples of such linear transformations are conversion from Celsius to the Fahrenheit scale and vice versa. So let's now look at what is going to be the expectation of y. Now, expectation of y is going to be basically expectation of ax plus b. We're just substituting y with ax plus b. And what we will see that it will turn out to be a times expectation of x plus b. Now, this is very simple and it's very convenient. So let's look at how this can happen. To do that, we have to find the expectation of ax plus b from first principles. So what is the formula for finding out the expectation of ax plus b? It's nothing but small ax plus b, the whole thing multiplied with the probability that the random variable capital X takes this value small x and you sum over all the different values of x. Now, of course, you can just multiply, break this summation up into two summations and what you will end up with is this final expression on your slide, which is a times x multiplied with probability of capital X equals x, this whole thing summed over different values of x, plus b times probability of x equals x summed over all the different values of x. Now, the first term, which is x times probability of capital X equals x summed over all different values of x is nothing but expectation of x. And the second term is nothing but b because the summation probability of capital X equals x summed over all the values of x is just going to give you 1. So expectation of y turns out to be a times expectation of x plus b. Isn't this convenient? So now let's look at another case. Let's assume that y is a times x squared plus b times x plus c. And you have to find this expectation of y. Wow, this is going to be difficult. So let's try to figure out how to get expectation of capital X or capital Y. Turns out it's very convenient and it's very easy. Basically, you have to find out expectation of y. What you will end up having is, is going to be a times expectation of x squared plus b times expectation of x plus c. It's as simple as the first one. So let's look at how we can get this formula. So to do that, we have to find out expectation of y, which from first principles is nothing but ax squared plus bx plus c. The whole thing multiplied with probability of capital X taking the value small x. You sum that over different values of small x. Now you split the summation into three different summations, as you can see on the screen. And what you will end up finally having expectation of y is nothing but a times expectation of x squared plus b times expectation of x plus c. So this is very easy. And if you have y expressed something that's raised to the power of 3, it's easy. It's again going to be to follow the same logic and expectation of y is going to be a times expectation of x to the power of 3 plus b times expectation of x squared plus c times expectation of x plus t. So what we understand here is that expectation of a sum of random variables is very easy to compute. Actually, it is, it is nothing but the summation of their individual expectations. That's what we are seeing here as well. That is y in this case is a summation of a random variable x cube plus another random variable x square plus another random variable x and there is d which is a constant. And you can see that expectation of y is nothing but their summation. Okay. Now let's look at the variance of a random variable and see what are the properties of variance. Now let's assume here that y is a linear function of x and a very simple linear function, which is y equals x plus b. So what we're doing is we are just shifting each value of x with this constant b. Now in this figure here, what you have is the probability mass function of x. And you can see that that is the two sigma of x which is basically the spread of that random variable. The sigma notes the standard deviation of x. Now let's look at the spread of y. Now y is x plus 10. Let's take that example where b is equal to 10. But you will see that all the values of y are going to be shifted by 10 and the PMF is going to look the same as x, but it's going to be centered at a different value. 
Essentially, the PMF in the previous case, or PMF of X was centered around 15, and the PMF of Y is kind of centered around 25 in this case. So what we're doing is we are going to, to just shift every value of X by 10. So what happens to the spread? So we are not increasing the spread or the distance between the random variables. We are just moving everything by 10. So the spread should remain the same. Essentially what, we, what I'm trying to say is the variance of Y should remain the same as variance of X because all that we have done is we have moved every or increased every value of X by 10. So let's prove it. To find variance of Y, we have to find variance of X plus B. To do that, let's once again take a first principles approach. And variance of x plus b is nothing but expectation of x plus b whole square minus expectation of x plus b, this entire thing squared. Now what we do is we expand uh, the x plus b whole square and what we get is expectation of x squared plus 2bx plus b squared minus expectation of x plus b, the whole thing squared. Now we just saw that expectation of a sum of random variables is nothing but the sum of their expectations. So we basically push the expectation through for the first expression. And what we do is for the second expression, we just expand it similar to a plus b whole square. And by simplifying, what we get is we get expectation of x square minus expectation of x whole square, which is nothing but variance of x. So what we have proved that variance of y is going to be variance of x when y is of the form x plus b. That is y is just x shifted by a linear uh, factor of b. Okay, now let's consider another example where y equals ax. Here every value of x is being scaled by the scalar a and that is what is being assigned to y. So once again we have the pmf of x which is shown here. Now as every value of x is being scaled by this factor of a, we will see that there is a spread in this PMF. Let's consider this particular example where capital Y equals 2x. Now you will see that every value of x is multiplied by 2 and that is what is uh, going to be the distribution of y. So we can see that there is this increase in the spread of y. Hence we can assume that this, there is going to be a spread in the variance as well. That is the variance of y is going to be different from the variance of x and it's going to be somehow dependent on the scaling factor a. Will it increase linearly as a or will it be some other factor of a? This is what we have to find out. To find out the variance of y, we once again start from first principles and what we will see is that variance of y is nothing but a square variance of x and the standard deviation of y is going to be a times standard deviation of x. So the variance gets scaled by a square. So let's see how this happens. So Variance of y is nothing but variance of ax and using the formula we will get variance of ax as expectation of ax whole square minus expectation of ax this entire thing squared. Now if you just do the simple math this is going to be expectation of a square x square minus a times expectation of x this entire thing squared. Now a is a constant hence we can take it out of the expectation in the first term and what we'll get is a square expectation of x square minus a square expectation of x whole squared. Now the a squared is common in both these terms. So taking that out, what we'll find is variance of y is nothing but a square variance of x. With this, I'll conclude this video. In this video, we looked at some of the simple properties of expectation and variance and we'll continue with some more distributions and things like that in the coming videos. Thank you for watching. If you do like my video, do subscribe to my channel.